Hey guys, it's Layla here from Ignite, and today I'd like to talk about a text called 1984 by George Orwell. I'm going to be focusing on a bit of an introduction to understanding the formal elements of this novel. If you're a student who's doing the HSC and you may be actually doing all well for human experience, what I'm going to talk today is explicitly useful for you. If you're not studying all well, there are still some interesting points I'm going to raise about analysing the forms of a speculative or a realist or a dystopic text, so stay tuned and there will undoubtedly be some good content coming for you. But thinking a little bit more specifically about George Orwell, I just wanted to flag that the form of his text is actually quite tricky to unpack because it is what I refer to as a hybrid. Just hold on to that point and I'm going to come back to it. Taking a step a little bit further back, it's important that you're aware that the formal features of a text are quite distinguishable from its language features. And if you're finding that distinction a little bit tricky, you can watch our video on form versus feature, what's the difference? But just to reference back to Orwell, the form of his text is referring to the broader construction of the text, how we characterise his consistent use of form throughout the text in its entirety and how it's been pieced together okay, as an integral unit. Now, the reason I refer to Orwell's text as hybrid is largely influenced by his context. You might know that it's a post-World War II text, and if you'd like more on his context, we've got a video coming up on that as well. But Orwell's intent in writing this text is in many ways to critique aspects of his context because the post-World War II world was pretty turbulent. But at the same time, as well as reflecting on his current world, he's very alarmed about how the elements of his contemporary context may progress into the future. So his text is doing two things. On one hand, it's reflecting on the past and the present of his world. But simultaneously, it's very much so being alarmed about the future and flagging how the contemporary world may progress if it continues on the same trajectory. And that's why I refer to his form as hybrid, because the formal elements he mobilises, which in this case is specifically the genres that he blends in his texts, are almost opposing in some ways. In order to deal with that first point about the reflection on his current context, he mobilises what's called realism. Okay, now realism is a genre that, as the word suggests, is reflective of the reality of that time. So he uses that through drawing specific contextual allusions to his contemporary world to flag an awareness to his current reader that, hey, what I'm describing in this book is actually a critique of your surrounding circumstances. And I'll do more on realism in another video. But in this introductory sense, remember this, okay, it's a hybrid form, it's blending multiple genres to reflect this very turbulent context but also comment on the future and part of that blending the first genre he mobilizes is realism. Moving on to the more speculative nature of his text right how he looks towards the future the second genre that he blends and I like to consider this genre in two parts and that is the dystopic genre and the speculative genre and both of these aspects of the text and the way that the text is characterised focuses on the future. But quite paradoxically, in order for Orwell to project comments about the future, he actually has to kind of ground those comments in his contemporary world. So he'll take an element of his current context and he'll dramatise it or hyperbolize it in relation to the future. And that's where the dystopic and the speculative elements come in. He speculates about how the present is going to manifest in the future. So he's guessing or viewing the future through the lens of this contemporary context. And the dramatisation of that element is what the dystopic genre does. It takes an element and it projects it into a very nightmarish sense. All right, so as a starting point in today's video, I just wanted to get you conceptualising the concept of form in Orwell, particularly with reference to genres. And I want you to remember his genre is hybrid. He's not purely speculative or dystopic, which is something that a lot of students seem to comment on. They notice very clearly, okay, there's exaggeration in this text. There are elements that are being taken to the extreme. 
but they also fail to realise that the reason he's doing this is because he's concerned more so about his contemporary world, in addition to being concerned about the future. So because of that element of his intent as an author, he must mobilise the realist genre. So when we're thinking about form in Orwell, take a step back, consider the macro construction and know realism, the dystopic elements and the speculative intent all blend together in this very hybrid form. I hope that got you thinking about form in Orwell and I hope you found it really useful to your study. If you do like the content, please subscribe and in our following videos, we've got specific examples of how realism and the speculative and dystopic genres play into Orwell's text and I'll give you some textual examples. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like the content, subscribe to our channel and we'll have more videos coming your way. That's right guys, thanks for watching and please make sure you check out our online resource database. We've had a team of state rank achievers and heads of English put these together for you, covering everything from essay structures and examples all the way through to craft of writing and comprehension skills. So check them out at ignitehse.com.au and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.